Look what I got here. Finally, I got my lithium solar charger. This is a 30 amps model. Okay, what else it's saying here? PMV charging mode, reverse battery charge and discharge option or protection. Yes, battery reverse connection protection, LCD display. What else? Solar charge controller. Okay, so we have a schematic over here, how to put the things together. So let's see what's inside. This model is KIZ30. We have a screwdriver and we have a manual in, it's in English, yes. Here is the little charger. It's very light and it have around 160 grams. Let's check the manual a little bit. Make sure that the battery has enough voltage, blah, blah, blah. And they are saying here very clear, never connect another charging source to the charge regulator. Yes, I'll do that, but obviously it's night, it's evening, so I can't use the solar panel. So I let the solar panel for the morning. What's the big deal about this model? Like I said before, it's KYZ30. So it's supposed to charge with 30 amps. And this particular solar charger, it's made for charging most lithium batteries. There is a menu that you change the model of the lithium batteries. Also, this one can charge classic lead acid batteries. But for now, let's hook a battery. Here is my wattmeter. We need a connection from this one to in. This one should be, of course, connected the other way. But for now, I want to see how much power is this little one taking in standby mode. Cross your fingers. Okay, there we go. So we have the display. All I can say for now is that in standby mode, like this, 13.8 milliamps and 16.8 with the lights on. And now let's see about the menu. As you may see, it's already on lithium. We have 11 volts, that's the battery. 12 volt, that will be the float voltage. This will be the discharge reconnect voltage. Then at 10 volts, it will be a under voltage protection. 24 hours, that means that the output is open all the time. You see, you can see over here on display that the light, the bulb it's on. Okay, next, 24 hours. That's lithium one and that's it. And we go back to the main display. But on L1, we should press longer and we have L2 and we have the classic lead acid. It doesn't say in this user manual but it's looking like if we go to one, two, three, four, five, we are to the batteries menu. You press this longer, like three seconds. And we have for L1, that's for regular lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries. L2, this is the funny part. L2 is for lithium iron phosphate for batteries. And this is really nice. And then BAT is for normal batteries. And the default is L1. Okay, so that's the menu. It's, very, it's a very simple menu. It's nothing special over here, nothing. Uh, what I want to do now is to dismantle, to open it up and take a look inside over there. Okay, so let's power it off. Of course, this is metal, simple metal, it's iron. So we have four MOSFETs over here and that's the regular configuration for charging and discharging. That's very nice, simple. And I forgot to tell you, here is a 12 volt port over here and we should have a microprocessor. Yes, we have it. It's under the display over there, you can see it. I don't know what kind of processor, I don't care, in fact. I hope they implemented the lithium and lithium iron 
phosphate software, charging software well. So this is a MOSFET for the output that will give voltage and current here to this two. And we have this four over here. Let's see what kind of MOSFET we got here. Yeah, that's hash Y1707 MOSFET. What about the other two? Same story. That should be more than enough for uh, for charging 30 amps. We'll see that uh, if we are lucky to have a sunny day these days. So they are saying in the manual, so never connect another charging source to the charger regulator. Well, I don't want to do that, but the point is that I want to see on the display about the amp hours and uh, we'll see that in the moment when we start charging for real. Now let's put it back. Well, I'm not sure about these uh, lines over here, if they are capable of having 30 amps, of dealing 30 amps of current, but we'll see when we're gonna start charging. You see, the point is they say, don't use another power supply, but the solar panel. You know, this is something funny about the solar panels. So let's say, I'm gonna use a, a 150 watt solar panel that can deliver around eight amps, let's say. The point is that this kind of current the solar panels are giving, of course it's eight amps, but this pulse wide modulation chargers, they are working somehow bringing down the panel to the battery's voltage. And they are doing that by having this uh, modulated pulse wide uh, something. The point is that if you put a solar panel in short, that will be no harm. Somehow the solar panel is making energy, but doesn't have the resources. So we don't have a stock behind the panel, I may say. So if you short for a short period of time, there is no harm. It's not like a battery, you know, if you short a battery, the whole energy of the battery, you know, like, I don't know, maybe a few hundreds of watts or a few hundreds of amps are just blowing the wires up. It's not the same situation with a solar panel, you know? So that's why a solar panel, it can be much more flexible for charging batteries, pulse-wide modulation. Uh, it's flexible because like I said, it's not having a energy reserve, you know. So when it's getting down and it's getting short, there is no harm for the batteries or for the controller. So that's why I don't want to make any other kind of uh, experiments with it. We have 11 volts. Okay, so what I'm expecting from this machine is to respect the way a lithium uh, or a lithium polymer or a lithium battery is charged. As you can see, we have the current over here. This line is current and that's usually 1C. Let's say if I have 8 amps over here, I'm, I'm going to charge it with maybe 4 amps to 8 amps. Depends of how much the panel can give me and the machine is delivering. So we have the stage 1 and here we have a constant current for let's say one and one hour and something in the meantime you see the voltage is growing going up to 4.2 usually and then when this 4.2 volts is reached then the current is going slowly down in the middle, we have stage two, that's the saturation charge. And this takes like maybe one and a half hour. And uh, then the current, like I said, it's going down. At the end of the saturation charge, let's say after three hours, three and a half hours, suddenly we're gonna have a voltage down a little bit because the current just stops. And the charge is terminating when the current it's lower than 3% of the rated current. Let's say one amp, if we go down to 30 milliamps, that's absolutely, it's easy to understand that, that the charging is going down. So then the voltage is going down a little bit and eventually the topping is coming up. The current is growing a little bit like 0 0.25. Let's say we have a 1C over here and that keeps the batteries at the proper voltage. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to have this voltage and watt meter connected in between the solar charger and the battery. And I'm going to have over here the amps and the voltage all the time. Of course, the time and the energy. And I'm going to have a very clear map about what's happening and if this one is doing the right job. I'm expecting results. You know, it's small, it's nice, it's looking good. But of course, if it's working and if it's charging the way it should, I'm going to have a proper heat sink over here, with aluminum or something, or even a small fan. And uh, we'll see later about this. Thank you for now. Don't forget to have fun. Bye bye.